give a moment here for the room to fill up. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, welcome back. Uh, summer's here and happy June. Glad everyone could join us today. Um, on behalf of the team at IT Solutions, I'd like to welcome to today's training event. Uh, we're always looking for ways to bring value to our uh, local business communities across the country, and we believe this training is going to knock that mission out of the park. Um, IT Solutions is an information technology and managed security provider. Um, for anyone who has a question today, please use the Q&A button in Zoom to bring up the dialog box where you can uh, enter your question. We'll get, try to get to as many questions as possible during our hour, but uh, our presenter will be staying after the post of time um, as well to answer any questions, so we'll get to all of them. Um, my name is Jason Cook. I am the uh, navigator specialist uh, here at IT Solutions. I, ha I handle and manage our portal, our customer portal here at IT Solutions. And um, so today uh, we now hold these regular monthly events and we'd like to get your feedback if you have any for any uh, ideas or future topics. We've gotten a few from people, so thank you for those. Uh, we do appreciate it. So feel free to email me at jec at nextyear.com with any ideas that you'd like to see. Um, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce everyone to Joe Lynn Reen, uh, our trainer and all around person of awesomeness who will be leading our learning journey today. Um, Joe jo Lynn Reen is, a, 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 sorry, has been a teaching uh, Microsoft apps since they were first released. Uh, she's a certified trainer and Microsoft master instructor um, with over 30 years of experience. Uh, she teaches the basics to advanced features uh, using programs like Teams, Excel, SharePoint Outlook, ChatGPT, SharePoint Designer. So Joellen, please take us from here. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you so much, Jason. And welcome everybody to our session today on SharePoint and, and really kind of being the champion of your SharePoint and how do we, you know, what is really SharePoint about and some different elements of it. So when it comes to SharePoint and when we refer to the word champion, we're going to get into kind of what the champion side of this is before we dive into the SharePoint itself. Um, but Every organization is structured a little bit differently, so I can't say 100% this is going to be your organization, but typically what happens is we have um, some department or some company that supports the IT administration of the background of the applications. But within our organizations, we want to discover who the champions can be of certain applications that can help with the development, the upkeep, um, really kind of making sure that things are updated and designed to be the best for the end users, for whoever is going to be kind of using the object that you're going to be the champion of. So if we talk about a SharePoint champion, a SharePoint champion can be one or more people within departments, within the entire organization, kind of depending on the size of your company. So if you have a very large company, you might have more than one champion and you might have a champion for a specific department. So let's say that I'm in the HR department. I could be the champion for SharePoint for our HR department, where I have the ability of designing the SharePoint sites and document management aspects of how it would be best for us to use the SharePoint sites for our department. Or I could be a champion for the whole organization, because if I have a smaller company, we don't always have as many staff members. Um, and in that case, I could be the SharePoint champion that is for the entire company, that when a SharePoint site gets created, I can be the one that is going to help with um, setting it up, designing it, you know, planning it, designing it, and we'll kind of get into the aspects of all of this, but the planning, the designing, the upkeep, you know, what's best for, what do people need to see? What do they need to have access to? Um, what's going to be best based on this group of people, this group of people, and the permission options that are going to be needed. Also, the champion sometimes is going to be because they are the most knowledgeable in that area, like the most knowledgeable in your department and or 
the usage of SharePoint, um, you might also be the person that does training, kind of does the training that will be provided to the end user so that they know how to use the SharePoint tools. So a lot of things, you know, a lot of hats <laughs> that the SharePoint champion can be doing within an organization, depending on what your needs are. But how do we determine who that champion is going to be? It's usually the person that is the most knowledgeable in the software or the area, um, the person that is kind of the liaison that can be a liaison between the employees and the IT department of the support so that we can have that person be the go-to to say, okay, we have end users that the, need these permissions. So if the champion doesn't have permissions to change the permission rights, we can work with IT and we're kind of that in-between person. But that champion is also the person that could be actually designing, actually going into SharePoint and adding different web parts, which is what the different pieces to the SharePoint site are. So it all depends on your organization as to how many champions you're going to have and what the responsibility of the champion would be. So when we kind of think of the overall environment of your entire company, this is a busy graphic. <laughs> this is showing a lot of different entities that an organization can have, <laughs> which when we talk about this, you know, when we look at the kind of the main hubs, HR, sales, travel programs, you know, EM EMEA, you know, whatever your main departments are. What are some aspects from that main department that we need someone responsible for? They're going to be responsible for maintaining, updating with current information. They could, of course, like I mentioned, be responsible for planning and designing of the site as well. But we want to think about the different aspects of that department and what would be needed and who's going to be the best fit to be that champion. So when it comes to kind of the creation of a SharePoint site, what we want to do is be able to, and this is the responsibility of the champion, is to understand the users. So who's going to actually be needing access to the SharePoint site? We want to be thinking about simplifying the way that people are going to navigate the site, because if anything is difficult, it's not going to be done. <laughs> so we want to make it as user friendly as possible. So this champion needs to make sure that the navigation is going to work for different people, depending on what their needs are in that SharePoint site. Also optimizing search functionality. We want people to be able to go to the search at the top and be able to find something within the hierarchy of the SharePoint site. Now, this is something that we generally need to work with an administrator of SharePoint uh, to make sure that the way that the SharePoint sites are designed, which I'll get to that in just a minute, um, will be able to search from here and here and here and here. So um, searching can be global, meaning it can be within the entire SharePoint site, or searching can be within the one subsite that we reside in. That'll make more sense here in a minute. Also, I had mentioned uh, providing training and support. Now, the liaison may, or I should say the champion may not be the person that always does the training, but they would work with who's ever going to provide the training to make sure that certain aspects based on the roles of your users, make sure that everybody is getting trained appropriately and providing support. A lot of times the champion will be the support person because someone could come back and say, well, how do I get to this? How do I find this? Where's the best place for me to store this? Um, those would be things that the champion in the organization can help with. If it's something beyond their scope of what they do, we can, of course, have a different help desk type person that can help with those specific questions. 
So one of the things that we want to be thinking about, and by the way, if you downloaded the handout, um, Jason put the, a link to the handout in the um, chat for you. If you download that, um, starting out on page one is talking about who are the champions. Uh, champions should be more formally trained so that they know the application well, um, so they know what the program can and can't do, so that when we get to the point of designing what is needed, they're going to have an understanding as to what exactly can SharePoint do? Should we be using something else or should we be using SharePoint? They want to have a plan ahead of time so that before we start to build, we already have planned out what's going to be needed. Now, it does continue on to page two with that great graphic of, you know, kind of thinking about how the digital workspace works. But one of the other things before we dive into this is what SharePoint is, this is how we build it, you know, this is how it's going to be designed. Before we get into that, I want to mention the governance side of using applications like SharePoint. So in your book, in your handout, on starting on page two, it talks about SharePoint governance. We really need some type of a policy or guidelines that really states what everybody's role is and what their responsibility would be. So kind of that roles and responsibility matrix that says the role of a champion is responsible for this. The role of an administrator is responsible for this. So that everybody has a clear understanding as to who's responsible for which aspects of working in SharePoint. Who's responsible for training? Who's responsible for support? Who's responsible for providing the necessary um, formatting, branding type elements that we need as well? So there's a lot of things that can go into kind of the pre-planning aspects before we even start using SharePoint. So we have to think about having some uh, policies and procedures or guidelines in place that we have clear understandings as to what is our objective with SharePoint. You know, kind of a scope statement that basically states, you know, what is our objective with this site and who's going to be responsible for which aspects. So with all of that being said, let's go to page three. I want to talk first about common mistakes with SharePoint because when SharePoint first came out, I still remember back in the day when it first came out, it's changed a lot. It's gotten much, much easier to work with and maintain. Thank you, Microsoft, for making these adjustments over the past few years. But SharePoint, SharePoint itself is not new. SharePoint is a website. So if you kind of think of your company website, SharePoint is like that very similar. We're going to see how built into Microsoft SharePoint as an app, we can build a SharePoint site similar to how a inch, or I sh should say a website would be built. So your company website, whoever designs and maintains that, SharePoint is similar. Um, it uses graphics. We have access to other applications. We can put in links. There's a lot of similar aspects to the two. And it's called a SharePoint site, like a website. <laughs> so they have a lot of similarities. So with either, <laughs> planning is one of the biggest common mistakes that people make. We don't plan before we build. So I want you to start off on the right foot. Be a planner. So plan everything before you actually go into SharePoint and build the site. Do not invite people to the site until it is actually built. <laughs> That's a mistake I know I personally made with SharePoint and Teams. Um, because if you invite people, you add them as a member right away, they're going to have access to the SharePoint site, but there's nothing really in it yet. So they're going to be like, why would I go here? So we don't want to discourage people. So don't invite people until you actually have content. So part of the planning is, you know, what is the objective of the site? What are we going to name it? Who needs access? Who needs which permissions? What other apps are we going to be using like document libraries, planners, 
lists, um, all kinds of aspects can be added and you're gonna see those in just a moment. So what documents, when we talk about document management in, in, as one, you know, what types of documents are gonna be stored and who needs right to, rights to each of those document libraries. So those are things that the champion can be a part of to help maintain and, and have them be built, whether the champion builds them or the administrator of SharePoint builds them. Um, the champion is still going to be involved regardless. Um, we want to know, should there be additional pages to the site? So we can have a landing page, and then we can have multiple other pages along with that that are going to be similar to your company website where they can click on a link to go to another place, to another page. Or what web parts are going to be needed in that SharePoint site. So those are going to be the things that you want to start with before you even build. Now there is in your handout some information about SharePoint settings. I'm just going to briefly touch on that today. That's kind of the permissions and the settings may not be maintained completely by the champion. Sometimes the administrator for SharePoint might be doing some of that or all of it. But what I wanna start with with everybody is when a SharePoint site is built, I typically, this is for me, I typically go to an internet browser and I go to my Microsoft account. And what I do from here is go to the app for SharePoint. So if you're gonna be the champion or the administrator, this is how a site could get started um, and accessed. <laughs> this is also where you can go to open a site. So if I go to the SharePoint app, just so you can see, it's gonna show me on the left-hand side, these are my recent or the sites that I follow. On the right-hand side, I see news sites, and then I'm seeing frequent sites, and I can see some information about these specific sites. So it's giving me this little tile, giving me information, like I look at this clinic one versus this training, I can see different information on each of these tiles related to that site itself. So when a site is created, which by the way, at the top left, if you have permissions to create a new site, you would see create site at the top left. If I click create site, what's gonna happen is it's gonna need to know right away, what do I wanna name the site? So if this is gonna be for the ABC company HR department, I could name it just that, you know, whatever you're gonna name it that you pre-planned, that you know what you're gonna create, what you're gonna name it. I'm just gonna click create. Once I do that, it's going to come up to another window here in a second, but sometimes it takes a second. If you realized what's going on in the background with SharePoint, there's a reason it takes a little bit to create this. But basically, when a site is created, we can choose what type of site we want to create. We could create a team site. We could create a SharePoint communication site. So this is what I would get if I created a site this way. This is not how I typically create a site. So I'm going to actually close that. Let me go back and show you how I typically do it. And this is an administrator feature because a lot of times in an organization, it's the administrator, not the champion, that is actually going to create the SharePoint site. So if I come into my Microsoft 365 administrator site, um, I can actually access the main and maintain SharePoint by coming into the SharePoint Administration Center. So that's actually what I'm in right now. If I go to the left-hand side, I'm going to click Active Sites. So this is going to show me a list of all of these sites that are active within my domain, within my company. At the top, I can click create. This is how a normal administrator would create a site because this is where we would be choosing, is it going to be a team site or a communication site? The difference between these, so if you're the, going to be the champion and you're going to work with IT to get these sites created, you need to know which one should it be? Which one do you need? 
even if you're not going to build it, you know, create it, start it, you still need to determine which one. So first, the communication site is generally the hub site, where a communication site is where we're going to automatically be giving information to the people that are going to visit the site. It's more of a, here's the information you need. We can have pages, we can have links, but a team site is directly connected to Microsoft Teams. The SharePoint site itself is automatically going to include a planner, a OneNote notebook. It creates a group. It has all kinds of additional things. So if you want to be able to really kind of communicate, go beyond a communication site, and you want to be able to collaborate with your coworkers that are going to be a part of the site, you're going to want a team site. I'm going to create a team site right now. So I'm going to click team site. There's templates. <laughs> so getting to know what templates are available, this is a great starting point. So if there's a template that matches your objective of what your site is going to be, you could simply start with a template. Now, of course, your organization can have a template as well. I'm going to say that mine is going to be based on employee onboarding team. So I'm part of the HR department and we're going to do some employee onboarding. I'm going to say that I want a SharePoint team site that is going to be based on onboarding. I'm going to click use template. I'm going to give my site a name and this is going to be based on my HR department for ABC company is what I'm going to name the site. And it lets me know that it's available because they all have to be unique. I could give a description. I could change the email address. So I could just call it HR department because when you create these types of sites, it automatically gives you an email address. We'll worry about that later, but you could see the URL that it's going to have because it is a website. So it does have a URL. Uh, the owner it needs to know who's going to be the owner. I'm going to put myself as being the owner. And that's what the whoever creates this, it would put you, the whoever the, um, the champion is going to be. They would be the one of the owners. There's usually more than one. But I'm just going to put myself and I'm going to click next. So then it wants to know privacy settings and different things. I'm just going to click create site. So when it is created this way, it's going to include certain elements automatically within that site. But we still have the capability of being able to add different web parts. So your book does get into your handout. Um, by the way, I'm not actually going to be adding any members. I'm just going to click finish. Once it comes up, I'm going to click finish, just so you know. But while that's building, let me show you what it typically is going to end up looking like. So this is an intranet site for, well, actually, let me go to the intranet. So in an organization, you could have an intranet where it's available to your entire organization. This could be the landing page. And to talk about what the champion might be doing, they might be adding or remodeling, redesigning a SharePoint page. So when we look at this, just so you know what you're seeing, this of these five images here, this is a web part. We're going to get into these different web parts. This is a web part. This is a web part. So all of these pieces to this page are web parts. Now, I'm actually going to go to a sub site. So if we kind of think of we have a, a site at the top and then we can have other sites connected to it. I'm going to go to a site just so you can see. I'm going to go to this one called clinic department. Clinic department is a team site. It is a it was built as a SharePoint team site. It wasn't started with a template but this is a team site. Even if it had a template, that's okay. If you are the champion, you would be able to remove and add different web parts to this main page and manage the navigation on the left. 
So when you come into a SharePoint team site, the navigation is on the left-hand side. Just so you can see, if I go back to, and let me kind of show you this. Let me jump back here real quick. If I go back to this intranet site, this is a communication site. So when it was built, it's not a team. It was a communication site that was started. So this has the navigation across the top. That's one of the differences between the two. A team SharePoint site is on the left. Communication is across the top. So I'm going to go back to the team SharePoint site. And I want to show you how to edit this site. So if you want to make changes, there's several different things you could do to make changes. And all of this is really, so if you kind of look through your handout, understanding your users, there's five key strategies, you know, customizing the user interface, providing training and support, that is all on page five. Then planning before you build starts on page six. Know the type of site that you want to be creating. Is it going to be a team site or a communication site? We don't do classic sites really anymore, but technically we could. So I left that information in the handout. But then SharePoint pages is at the bottom of page six going to page seven. And in a uh, SharePoint site, has what is called a landing page. But then we can add different pages to that depending on what needs to be in those pages. There's a lot of design aspects. We won't get into a lot of that today. This is more of an overview. But you want to kind of, I've been designing websites and SharePoint sites for quite a few years. And one of the things that we want to not do is overload one page of a SharePoint or website. You don't want people having to scroll down, you know, lots of lots of ways and then want to need need to get back up to the top. We want to make it so that it's easy for people to find the information they need. So how can they navigate to get it? Whether it's the navigation pane on the left, a navigation pane across the top, or hyperlinks within the page itself. So this page has a up at the top. This is called a hero web part. I'm going to go to the edit at the top right. Because I have edit capabilities, if you do not have edit capabilities on a site, you will not see that. But if the IT administrator created the site and made you the owner, you would have edit capabilities. I'm going to click edit. It takes me into editing mode for this page and technically the entire site. So a, a SharePoint site, no matter if it's a team or a communication site, is made up of sections. Inside each section can be different web parts. So I have this web part up at the top of this first section. Now, how do I know what is a section and what is a web part? On the left-hand side, you're going to see a plus sign. Notice there's two plus signs that you can see on my screen right now. Each of those would allow me to add in a new section. So I know this top part is one section. And it has a border around the outside edge of that entire section. Otherwise, if I click the plus sign on the left, it's going to add a brand new section and sections can be one column, two columns, vertical sections. We have all these different layout options that we can use as to, you know, what is going to go in this section. I'm just going to say two columns as an example. So I have this brand new section and I can add something on the left and something on the right in this section. The top section as I hesitate on those graphics, at the top left, you can see the name of the web part. It is called a hero. A hero includes images and links that they could just click on the image and automatically navigate to a different location, whether it's to a page, whether it's to another site, <laughs> whether it's to the company website. It can really take them anywhere they need to go. <laughs> 
basically. <laughs> So I'll talk more about managing those sections in a minute, but I want to talk about getting different web parts into these sections. Now, of course, there's information about all of what I'm talking about in your handout, starting on page seven and eight and nine and 10, several different pages. But if I hesitate on either of these columns within this section, I'm going to, when I hesitate at the top, I get this bar with a circle with a plus sign. That is where we go to add a web part to that part, to that left column of that section. So if I click that plus sign, I'm going to get the list where I could search at the top or I could go to my frequently used web parts or I can go into different categories like text, media, and content. We have document lists and libraries. We have feeds, news, people, and events, data analysis, regional information, and some advanced information where we can be doing different code and different things to maintain our site. So these are the different web parts that can be added to a SharePoint site. So if you've been using SharePoint, and you didn't know how these got designed, this is how it gets designed. <laughs> um, it can be designed using code, but we have these easy to use designer tools for the champions to use. So depending on what I want to go in that column on the left, maybe I wanna include, um, let me actually say that I wanna put in, I'm gonna come here to this, feeds and I'm going to say that I want to well actually let me come to news people and events and I'm going to do a countdown timer just to show you this web part that we can be adding in when I do that when I add this in I can give a title to whatever this countdown is so let's say that your organization is going to be holding a blood drive and you want to put information on this landing page that as soon as people come into the site, they're going to see it right away. I'm going to name this blood drive. And then where it has this countdown, we can actually choose what the countdown date is going to be. So what are we counting down to? We're counting down to when the blood drive is going to happen. So we can actually be changing when the date is of this event. Now I'll get into a little bit more of editing that in just a second. Um, so in the middle, we can say, this is how many days to the blood drive, how many hours, how many minutes, and how many seconds till the, till the blood drive starts. Down at the bottom though, we get a placeholder for adding in the description. This don't miss out on the company blood drive. You know, I could put in a description of what everything is going to be. But notice I have a set of tools at the top left. One of these tools is we can move the web part. So if I decided I wanted to move it up a section, down a section, or to the right, we can always physically click and drag a part, a web part, to a different location on the page or I can click on the pencil to edit the web part. And that's what I'm actually going to do. I'm gonna click this edit web part. And notice on the right-hand side, it brings up the date time so that we can actually have it be counting down to the date of this event. So I'm gonna click on the date, there's a little calendar icon, and I'm gonna say that the event is gonna happen in July, and it's gonna be on the 8th of July, and it's going to happen at 9 a.m. So the timer knows exactly how many days, how many hours, etc. But if you wanna display the timer a little bit differently, here's your choice. You could click on this drop down and say, you just want days, hours, minutes. When you're done, you, oh, by the way, you could add a background. So if I click add background, this is gonna take me into being able to choose an image. I could go to the internet and do a search. I could use stock images. I could go to my computer, etc. So I'm just gonna choose stock images and I'm gonna put in blood drive so that I can find an image that will be related to working, oh, 
didn't have that. <laughs> didn't. So I'll just choose blood. So I won't go too crazy on my image here. I'll just choose an image. And just so you can see, you can have a gray shaded image in the background. If I wanted to add something else on this right hand side of this section that I added in, I could go to this right hand side, hesitate at the top. Once again, I can click add new web part. Oh, by the way, on this right hand side, because I still had that pane open, it's asking me if I want to change the section itself. I'm just going to close that for right now. I'll come back to that in a minute. But the way that each of these pages are going to be set up, no matter how many pages you have, is you're going to be adding in sections and each section can have multiple columns. And then each column is where you add a web part. It is a very good idea to have a test site that you can practice with. Um, but let me give you an example. So if I go back to this plus sign again, I will get that list of the different web parts again. Then I could choose whichever web part I want. I want to point out some of them that are very common. First, you have the hero. The hero allows you to add five images, three images, however many you need. And it's usually at the top of the page, giving you graphics a place to put graphics that are related to whatever the link will be. So it's a great easy way for people to navigate right from the top of the page. But we also have calendars. So these are under my frequently used. I could be adding in document libraries to maintain our you know, file structure. I could be adding in lists. But as you go down the text, media, and content, what if I want to create a button that people click on and automatically go someplace else. You could add in a button, a call to action, which is something that we could say, register for this blood drive, or we could have it take them someplace or email someone. We have different graphics that could be added like a border to kind of separate things. Um, images can be added. We can have a gallery of multiple images. We can have quick links. And quick links are a way that we can actually be adding in links to multiple things. It's kind of like a sub menu where we could have this. And let me show you what this one looks like because it's common. Um, if I do quick links, I could click and say, what do I want for that link? So we can have different elements be added depending on what exactly it is that you need. So I could come in and put in an actual web address that can be a physical link of where they're going to go. So what if I want them to go to our intranet? I'm just going to copy this web address and I'm going to paste it so that the link is going to be here. At the bottom right, I'm going to click add. So I added this quick link so that, and by the way, on the right hand side, I can go back and change it. Um, I can give this whole thing a name. So I could call it easy navigation, you know, whatever you want to name it. Um, there's a few other aspects over here on the right, but I won't worry about those for right now. I'm just going to close this quick links, but you can come back and add in whatever it is that you want people to have access to. It could be a menu of different quick links to take them wherever they need to go. Whether the link is going to take them to a file, it's going to take them to another page, it's going to take them to a website. Each different link can be set up however you need it to be set up. Now, once again, once I created this, if I want to modify the link that I added, which by the way, you can put a different image there, <laughs> um, you can use the edit to reopen this window. And by the way, this is where I could actually be putting in a custom image. Or I, you know, because usually you want your own little icons that help represent what it is. Um, so something to consider. That's where a lot of planning comes into play, by the way. <laughs> if you know you're going to be putting in a quick link web part, what links do you need? What are the links? What are the actual physical addresses so that when you're building it, you have them available? And what images do you want to go to the left-hand side 
of those quick links. So there's a lot of planning that comes into play with every web part that gets added to the different pages. So I'm going to click change just so that you can see how we could do that. So I'm just going to choose this image that I had here. And you can see that that's now the image on the left hand side of the link that I named easy navigation. <laughs> just to show you that that's how it's going to show up. But you can continue to add whatever links it is that you want to have accessible for the end users. Now, as you are making changes to adding in sections, putting in these web parts, everything can be modified. You can always rearrange an entire section, move the sections up and down, because sometimes you realize the most important information always goes to the top. If you ended up putting it towards the bottom, you could move the whole section. So if you look on the left-hand side of this section, there's a plus sign to add another section at the top of this section. Or there's this edit section. We have move section. So if I decided I wanted this section at the top, I can use this move, click and drag it above this section and release and it just rearrange them. But editing the section is a definitely a thing you want to understand how it works. So let me click on the pencil icon. If I want to modify the structure of this whole entire section, on the right hand side is my tools. So on the right hand side, if I decided I wanted a, you know, this to be bigger, this to be smaller, I want it aligned at the center or the bottom. And it's depending upon what I'm clicked on, because I can add more than one web part to each column within a section. So now I just kind of moved this quick links down. I have a new plus sign to add a new web part that could go above the quick links within this section. Each section technically should be somewhat related to each other. So the information going in that section usually is going to be related to each other but not always, <laughs> because sometimes I have an image over here, I have quick links over here, and they're not physically related. But just so you can kind of think about a section includes related items generally. But if I want to put in a different web part to go above my quick links, maybe I want it to actually be um, news. I'm going to click news it's going to automatically insert the web part for news. So I can come in and add new news that we want to make sure all the coworkers have, you know, they know what's going on. Um, we can come in and keep adding in whatever news we want. So you could see that here's some news from 2023. Uh, there was a new post. So now I have this great big space over here for this countdown. So as you can see, there's a lot of different that whole section is getting taller as we add different web parts. So you kind of want to fill the spaces. So that's where the designing and planning, or I should say the planning ahead of time is going to come in a lot easier if you plan and think ahead. But anyway, just so you can kind of see different aspects of what it is that you can be adding in. You can always go back remove an element, remove a web part by going back to the web part itself. So I just clicked on this news. I can go to the menu at the top left of that web part and click delete. So I can get rid of it if I don't want to keep it. So just so you can see different choices on how you want to organize your sections and your web parts. So think about which web parts are going to be most beneficial to the end users. Now, I'm going to come back and do a little bit more with this. But just so you know, as you are creating and making changes, there is a save a draft at the top left. So let's say that I, I was working on this, but now I need to go off to a meeting. You can save the changes that you just did as a draft. Meaning, if someone goes to the site, they're not going to see it. It's a work in progress. 
when you are ready to have everybody see the changes that you've done, at the top right, we can republish it. That means that it's going to be live for whoever is an owner, a member, or a guest of the site. So with a SharePoint site, it's like Microsoft Teams, where we can have different permission levels based on the people coming to the site, just so you're aware. Now, I'm going to actually, I'm going to republish this. Let me say that I want to go ahead and just republish this because I want people to see all these changes that I just made. That is something a champion would be doing on a regular basis. They need to keep up with adding in the latest and greatest news. You know, are we doing a blood drive? Once it's done, they need, they need to go back in and remove it. So it isn't just planning and designing. It's also maintenance. So we need to be able to go back in, edit the site to be able to update it with the most recent information, taking things out that are no longer needed. So once the blood drive is done, we would take out the timer. We might put in a thank you for the next week to say thanks for everybody. This is how much we blood we um, collected, you know, whatever the case would be. You can mix it up. Then when it's, you know, a week later, take it out again. So it's a matter of understanding the schedule as to, you know, okay, I added this. Now I need to make a task that says I need to remove this on this day or change it to this on this day. So the champion will be responsible for doing things like that. Okay. I want to take this a little bit further when we talk about our sites, though. On the left-hand side, because this was a team site, by default, all sites, whether it's communication or teams, will automatically get a document library. On the left-hand side, mine says documents. By default, that is going to be the name. <coughs> One SharePoint site can have multiple document libraries. So that's something the champion can be responsible for as well, is which libraries do we need? and who needs rights to those libraries. Um, the naming, you know, what are we going to name them? So this site has legal documents as well. This is a separate um, SharePoint document library. Not everybody in my site that is a has access to the site needs to have access to this. So technically, we could have the permissions be different for each document library or other aspects. But also by default, when this site was created on the left hand side, it also gave this and let me point out a couple of different things that it gave. It gave this task list. If we click task list, because it's a team site, it's assuming that we want to collaborate with our coworkers in this site. So it gives us a planner a Microsoft Planner task list where we can be assigning tasks to our coworkers. It also gives you a notebook. So on the left-hand side, it automatically gives a shared notebook that everybody within the site has access to so we could all be collaborating and sharing notes, just so you know that. I'm going to click the back arrow to go back to the site, though. And also on this left hand side, I have quite a few other things like vaccinations is a page. If I click vaccinations, it's going to take me to a totally different page within my SharePoint site. I could have access to it from the left hand side of the navigation. I could have an image that somebody clicks on. It could have been a quick link. Lots of different ways for designing navigation throughout the site. But I want to kind of have you take a look at this um, vague, this vaccinations. I'm just kind of scrolling down a little bit just so you can see different aspects of the web parts that it has. It has two text um, web parts where we could just physically type in text and put a title to it. They can include links to get into other information. Up at the top right, it's got a calendar where the champion can maintain the calendar and put different events that are coming up, whether it's going to be training or whatever your case would be for whatever your department is or what the page is related to. Lots of cool things can be added to our sites.
This is a go-to place for people to have access to all the information related to the name of the site. But just so you can see, if I want to get back to the home page of this site, on the left-hand side, I have home. This will take me back to the landing page of this site so that I'm back at the main menu, basically. But this was created as a Microsoft SharePoint team site. <laughs> Therefore, it is directly connected to Microsoft Teams. So on the left-hand side, there's a shortcut here to Teams. If I click on it, by the way, I haven't been on the in here since I got my new computer, but here's Microsoft Teams. So when I came into that link for Teams, it takes me to the application Microsoft Teams because it automatically creates a team in Teams based on that SharePoint site. So you could see here's clinic. It has two channels, general, and it has vaccinations. So we could add other channels as well because people could be coming straight into the document libraries and things directly here in Microsoft Teams without having to go to SharePoint to access details. Just to show you a little bit of information here related to this site is at the top of this channel called vaccinations, I have clinic SharePoint site. It is a Sorry, I haven't done this since I got my new computer. I apologize. But I just clicked on the link to get to that site. It automatically opened it. So it is a way that I can physically be seeing the contents of the site directly from within Teams. But I'm going to actually close that. And let me come back here into Teams. Usually when I click on that link, uh, sorry, this is a problem that I need to take care of. Um, it usually would just open the site right here in Teams. I wouldn't have to go to the browser. But also I have legal documents. Once again, my rights are weird because I didn't reconnect this because I got a new computer. So sorry. Um, but this legal documents is actually would be showing me the SharePoint document library, which is the same as the document library within the site. It's the same one. So we can have that accessible directly here through Microsoft Teams. I don't have to go to SharePoint to access the files. So I could come in and add other elements as well. Just like any Microsoft Teams team, we could be adding in different things. So if I go to see all for all the different apps that I have accessible, maybe I want to add in the channel calendar. So you could see that there's several different things that we technically could be adding in as a new tab that can be related to the SharePoint site. Lots of connectivity from different applications into Teams and into SharePoint. And by the way, if, if you create a team in Microsoft Teams here, it automatically creates a SharePoint site. So if I go to my accounting department team and I go to my channel called accounts payable, it has a files tab up at the top. This whole accounting department is a SharePoint site. And this accounts payable has this files tab. This is a SharePoint document library. So SharePoint and Teams are very interconnected. You can create a team and you automatically get a SharePoint site. You could create a SharePoint site that is a team and you automatically get a team interconnected. But they're also interconnected with all of your 365 apps. So lots of connectivity all over the place. But just so you can see, if I go to the menu at the top of this document library, I can click open in SharePoint. Even though that was a regular team, because it's connected to a SharePoint site, you could see the navigation on the left-hand side. Here's the document library directly in SharePoint. If I click home for this accounting department, 
if I am a champion, a SharePoint champion, I could edit the site where I can be putting different act, different web parts that people might need to see. Like the accounting department is going to have a mandatory training. They're going to have a mandatory meeting, whatever. We could actually go to the edit on the right-hand side and edit the sections and the web parts, just like we did before, because it's still SharePoint. So lots of connectivity back and forth, back and forth. Now I'm just gonna actually close all this. I'm gonna close that one. So when we were back into the administration where we have whoever has rights to create a new SharePoint site, this is where it starts. Usually you wanna start it this way as opposed to the way I showed you at the beginning, because this is the user friendly. This is going to give you either a communication or a team site. You're gonna name it. Don't invite people be, until you have it. So this is the one I was creating. I'm not gonna add any members. I'm gonna click finish. I'm gonna come back and add members later. You wanna build it before they come. So plan it, build it, then add people. And IT, of course, the admin can help you with the permission levels so you have a better understanding. If you're the champion, they can help you with that permission levels. Know who needs to have access so that they can be added as a member, but do they need special permissions to certain things? Like this document library versus this one. So some things to plan ahead with. Now, all of this that I'm mentioning has all been in your handout as well. Use templates when possible. It started on the bottom of page eight, going to page nine in your handout. Talks about the different templates to use when a site is created so that you're gonna have some content there automatically. It also talks about page templates. When we go to add a new page, how many pages do you need? because pages are gonna help you separate content. So if I'm in the HR department, the main page is main information for everybody, but I could have a separate page that is related to employment, a separate page for benefits, et cetera. How many pages do we need? Do they need their own pages? Because we can have multiple pages to our pages. So look through your handout. If you have been determined the champion for your organization and you need to get yourself more familiar with editing a site, it talks about the sections, it talks about the web parts, it talks about different moving them around, adding new ones, changing the layout of different things, what each of the web parts are, which web parts start on page 14, just so you're aware. It gives you a description of the different options that you have realize you know what's going to be the most important aspects of this page or the entire site for the people that will be accessing it okay jason did we have any questions from the group i'm not seeing any questions right now so um if anybody does have any questions please let us know yeah so let me kind of while we're kind of waiting for that let me get back to showing everybody our upcoming, oops, sorry. Yes. We, we wanna show the upcoming. All right, well, as you can see, we have what's new in chat GPT coming up on July 17th. That's always a exciting topic. That's one of our favorites, Joe and mine. So it's always something new. She comes up with some great trainings on that. So um, so again, please all check out all our other uh, tra ITS trainings on the networkpro.net. Just go to Learn It with TNP tab on our webpage and click on trainings and you'll see a variety of amazing training content from, again, ChatGPT, Outlook, SharePoint, Teams, OneNote, Cybersecurity. We've, we cover the gambit. So yes. uh, please do that. Um, here is our contact info. Uh, oh. Kevin Studley is our Director of Regional Sales and Adana Williams is our Director of Technical Account Management in Arizona. Um, so these webinars, they are done free of charge because we believe this is valuable information and one of the pieces that helps us accomplish our mission. So if you found this webinar valuable, all that we ask you pay the mission fee of sending it to a friend. 
And be sure that you don't miss on any future upcoming webinars. Just scan the QR code there on the screen and sign up to be included on our invite list for uh, technology training. And I don't see any other questions. So it, uh, that's, uh, please, uh, if you do have, if you think of something, let us know or email me, let me know. Um, I thank you for your time, Jillian, as great as Absolutely. always. Absolutely. And thank you to everyone for your time and have a great week. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye. you.